Welcome to this video in the communication topic. This video is going to be looking at the syllabus dot point, identify the limited range of wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum detected by humans and compare this range with those of other vertebrates and invertebrates. So let's start off by having a look at the electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic radiation is made up of a large group of radiation waves that all travel at the same speed, which is about 300,000 kilometers per second but all of which have different wavelengths and frequencies. These waves are a form of energy and most of these waves are invisible to the human eye. The diagram here shows the electromagnetic spectrum, that is, the range of wavelengths present in the electromagnetic radiation that we have on Earth. This shows that the energy is associated with the changing electric and magnetic fields. It includes forms of radiation such as radio waves, TV waves, microwaves, infrared heat radiation, X-rays, ultraviolet rays, and visible light. This part here being visible light is the small part of the electromagnetic spectrum that can be seen with the naked human eye. This visible part of the spectrum has wavelengths that can be detected by the light-sensitive cells in our retina, which we know are our rods and cones that are present in the human eye. It is interesting to note that different wavelengths are visible to different animals. Waves of the electromagnetic spectrum are able to travel through a vacuum, unlike sound waves that need a medium such as air to be able to move. When rays of light reach a transparent substance such as glass, plastic or even water, they are able to travel through it, although they may become bent or refracted. Isaac Newton discovered that if a beam of light is passed through a prism, like our triangular prism on the screen, it can be broken up into the seven colours of the spectrum. This splitting of white light into its colours is known as dispersion. These are the colours of the rainbow with which we are familiar. So in order, we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet, or a way to remember them in order is rojibiv. So these seven colours form the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can see. Most humans are able to see all of the wavelengths or all of the seven colours, but studies have shown that the greatest sensitivity to light in humans is in the green range of the spectrum. When we're talking about waves, the wavelength is the distance measured between two, cross, two crests sorry, or two troughs. So basically exactly the same point on two consecutive waves. The wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum are measured in nanometers, where one nanometer equals, sorry, one millimeter equals a thousand nanometers. Okay, so that gives us the understanding that these waves are extremely small, which is why we can't actually see them. The wavelengths of visible light range from 380 to 760 nanometers. Light in the violet and blue part of the spectrum travels as short waves with a maximum wavelength of 380 nanometers and these are high energy waves. So the shorter the waves, the higher the frequency, therefore the higher the energy that the wave has. Light in the red part of the spectrum travels as long waves with a maximum wavelength of 760 nanometers which have less energy. So at the moment we need to know what uh, range humans are able to detect light in which is 380 to 760 nanometers and as we move on to look at photoreceptors in our retina we then need to break it down into our three different colors being our red green and blue and know what the different wavelengths are for each of those but at the moment 380 to 760 nanometers is the number that you need to commit to memory so objects tend to absorb some wavelengths of light and reflect others Objects appear colored because of the light that they reflect. White light is actually a mixture of all the colors of the spectrum. So when white light falls on an object, such as a green leaf, the green light is reflected off the object and into our eyes, and this is the color that our brain detects. The other wavelengths, so in this case, red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, and violet, are absorbed by the object and cannot be detected by our eyes. When an object appears black, all of the light that falls on the object is absorbed. A white object reflects all of the wavelengths of light that reach it. This also accounts for dark colors being warmer since they absorb more light and more heat and white colors tending to be cooler since they reflect all of that uh, light 
and therefore reflect the associated heat. The human eye has evolved to see colours in bright daylight. We are able to detect colour in the visible range of spectrum, but we have receptors that are sensitive to light mainly in three regions of the spectrum, being red, green and blue wavelengths. And this is termed trichromatic, so tri3, chroma, colour, so trichromatic vision. The human eye is unable to detect wavelengths in the far regions of the violet spectrum or any wavelengths in the ultraviolet part of the electromagnetic spectrum. We are blind to wavelengths of less than 400 nanometers. That is, we cannot see UVA or UVB light. So these are the rays that cause people to tan, which are given off by the sun. So although most living organisms have a visual range close to that of humans, some differences are evident. Many insects, including honeybees, are able to detect wavelengths in the ultraviolet range of the spectrum. That is, their light-sensitive cells can detect the shorter wavelengths present in the UV range. UV patterns on flowers that attract bees may have a bullseye pattern directing the, uh, the bees to the pollen and nectar in the centre of the flower. Honeybees, however, are unable to detect some of the longer wavelengths in the red part of the spectrum. It is thought that they see red objects as black or the absence of colour. Therefore, honeybees do not see a wider range of colours than humans, but they see a different range from UV through to blue and green, but not into the red. Most studies of colour vision in insects use honeybees as a model animal, but recent research involving the use of butterflies indicates that they may have even more visual pigments and receptor sites than honeybees. This suggests that some butterflies may be able to detect a greater range of colours than honeybees or humans. Some species of butterfly have only three colour receptors in their eyes, but other species may have up to five. Unlike humans, most bird species are able to detect light well into the ultraviolet range of the spectrum. In addition to this, birds tend to be able to detect light most efficient, efficiently sorry, in the red or longer wavelengths and green ranges of the spectrum. They are also able to detect light in the blue range, suggesting tetrachromatic vision, again, so four wavelength ranges of colour as opposed to humans being trichromatic. And some studies on pigeons have led to suggestions of them having a pentachromatic vision, so they're able to actually identify five wavelength ranges. It is interesting to note that sensitivity to light in the near UV range, previously thought to only occur in insects and birds, has recently been found to be present in some reptiles, for example geckos, and also some rodents. The blue cone receptors in mice are actually UV sensitive. Furthermore, many animals that are able to fly are also able to detect polarised light, which humans cannot do. Polarisation of light is thought to be useful to those animals for navigation during flight. Basically, polarisation is what we see when you buy a, set, a pair of polarised sunglasses. So they basically cut the glare out of our, from the sun and therefore help us to be able to see much easier. So lastly, dogs do not detect colours the same way that we do. Their eyes do not contain as wide a variety of photoreceptors as ours, so they see colours that are much more muted. So as we can see there, that diagram shows that the colours are not as vivid it's not 100% black and white, which some people have been led to believe that dogs have, but we can see that there is a definite difference between human vision and canine vision. And this is now going to lead us into a secondary source investigation where we have a look at different organisms, their ranges of electromagnetic radiation detected, and the reasons why this is the case. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.